you got it all. Sure. Tammy, would you um, click that? You got it. Okay. All right, I'll call this uh, meeting to order. It's 5.30. Uh, Linda, uh, let's all stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, and liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. Uh, it's nice to be back and gone for a long time. Um, uh, 1.2, adopt the agenda. Are there any uh, corrections or changes to the agenda as it was posted? I don't have any. I don't have any. Uh, no? Okay. Um, is there a motion to adopt the agenda as posted? I'll make a motion to adopt the agenda as posted. Is there a second? I'll second that. All right. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Bianca? Aye. Melissa? And I also approve. Uh, motion carries. So at this point, um, we'll um, close the open session to uh, adjourn uh, to close session. But uh, beforehand, um, the um, the public is um, invited to um, address the board um, and the matters that we'll be um, addressing in closed session um, is um, 2.3.1, conference with the legal counsel, anticipated litigation, Significant exposure to litigation pursuant to 54956.9B, one potential case. Um, those uh, closed session attendees will be board members, Sherry, our di director, and Casey Fee, uh, legal counsel. So, so are there any public comments to be made at this time? All right, uh, hearing none, we'll uh, adjourn to closed session at 5.34. Okay, and just so everybody knows, we, so when we go into the closed session, I'll be creating a breakout room and I'll be assigning um, Bianca Garza, Melissa Johnson, Jerry Cox, uh, KCP, and myself into the breakout room. And we'll, uh, when we're done with closed session, we'll come out of the breakout room. So everyone can just stay in the open meeting Zoom um, and we'll uh, resume when, and back in open session when we're done. Okay, does anybody have any questions or anything before we do? You're welcome, Sarah. <laughs> All right. Okay, and Bianca and Melissa, hopefully you're seeing something on your screen pop up that asks you to join the breakout room. Yep.
Melissa and, and Bianca, can you hear us? Uh, we're, all not, right? we're not in the booth. Oh, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> they're, so they're not in this. We're in the booth. Okay, because I want to make sure so that we can hear us. Because like.
<laughs> this is probably true. It's been a long time since I've been over there. My birthday's coming up. Oh, it is? Uh-huh. Yeah. February 1st. Oh, well, happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah, and actually, the Etna Brewery was bought by the Denny Bar. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And I haven't been there yet. Yeah, and so it's kind of always been like up and down since I guess when it started, it was amazing. Like okay. they just had it popping. They had a great chef. They okay. had really good brewers. Yeah. And they just uh, flourished in the community. Yeah. Then it kind of, you know, changed hands and all this. Okay. But now that it belongs to the Demi Bars owners, um, okay. they have a great menu. And okay. Like a good tasting. So if you go awesome. on a day that they're both open, it's kind of fun to go. You, yeah, they give you samples of all the of their drinks, yeah, their yeah. stuff. And, okay. Yeah. Like snack foods and stuff. Right, right, right. I'll keep that in mind. Um, sure. No, we cannot hear you. Can you, can, you, can you hear us now? Yeah. Harry, what time is that? Okay. Six, what? 28. 28. Can you hear us? Yes. You okay. can hear us, right, Bianca and Melissa? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Rebecca. Yep. We can hear you. It's Julie. Hi, guys. Thank you for waiting. Thank you for your patience. Okay. Um, I'll call. We'll reconvene uh, into open session. It's 6.31. Linda? I got it. Okay. Um, um, so in uh, reconvening into open session, um, uh, there's no action to report taken during closed session. Okay. All right. So um, item four, the consent agenda, 4.1, consideration of approval of warrants and payroll for Northern United Humble Charter School. 4.2, consideration of approval of warrants and payroll for Northern United Siskiyou Charter School. Batches 1201, 1213, 1227. 4.3, consideration of approval of minutes for the December 9th board meeting. 4.4, consideration of resignations, leaves, and change of assignments. 4.5, consideration of approval of Williams Uniform Complaint quarterly report for Northern United Humboldt Charter School. 4.6, consideration of approval of Williams Uniform Complaint Quarterly Report for Northern United Sisby Charter School. Are there any uh, corrections? I saw none. None for me. None, okay. Um, hearing none, um, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the cons consent agenda as posted. I second the motion. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Bianca? Okay. Aye. Melissa? Okay. So, aye. Oh, aye. I didn't restart the recording. Uh, oh. Motion oh. has it been open. Uh, hey, Jerry. Yeah, go ahead and start it, Kirk. Okay. Okay. Oops. No, it's just it's it's yeah. All right. So, um, item five public comments uh, for items not on the agenda. Under this item, the public is invited to address the board regarding items that are not on today's agenda. Please keep your comments concise, brief, and limited. Change to a charge or a complaint against an employee of Northern United Humboldt Charter School or Northern United Siskiyou Charter School, 
The board encourages the speaker to utilize the school's written complaint procedures to pursue the matter. The public will have an opportunity to come in on all agenda items uh, as they are heard. Are there any public comments? None, all right. Hearing none, we'll move on. Action items to be considered. So, um, uh -oh. 6.1, approval of the Eureka Learning Center lease for 4620 Myers Avenue. Well, it was a long time in coming, but here it is, the new lease for um, Eureka Learning Center, the lease for the new location for Eureka Learning Center. Um, the lease goes into, went into effect January 15th, though, um, because that was a partial month, we made a partial payment, but they're going to credit us because the facility is still not quite ready. You know, they painted it, put in new floors, new partitions, doing quite a bit of work to it. And unfortunately, when they ordered for the floors, they underestimated on the amount they needed. So they're short about a room and a half and they're waiting on that coming in. So they're going to credit us um, the time until between now and the time it's finished, which you guys know is fine because our anticipated move-in date isn't until the end of February anyway. So. Okay, thank you, Sherry. Are there any um, questions or comments? Uh, no, it looked pretty standard to me. Was there anything that stood out to you in it, Sherry? Was there anything what, Bianca? The lease, it looked pretty standard to me. Is there anything that stood out to you? No, I, you know, there, there actually was, uh, there actually was one thing that I went back and forth with her about. Okay. Um, and I'll point it out to you. It's, uh, to be honest, there's, I feel like it's poorly written. Um, and I'll tell you the part that I think that on. It's in the section about, um, like maintenance and repairs. And there's a section that talks about um, the electrical system and who would pay in case of an issue with the electrical system. Mm -hmm. And in one section, it says the leasee is responsible for fuses, circuit breakers, things like that. And the leasee will be responsible for repair or replacement of any component of the electrical system that would be damaged as a result of something we did. Right. So that's saying like we would be responsible for anything we broke mm -hmm. or anything like that. And then there's another section that says, um, let me see if I can find it. Uh, the electrical system all also uh, lessee shall be solely responsible for the repair. Um, any upgrades to it is up to us. Um, so to me, I'm interpreting that as just we'll fix anything if we are responsible for breaking it. But then in a later section where it talks about what the less or is responsible for, it says, it basically says that we'd be responsible for the electrical system. And I pointed out how that was a discrepancy. You know how one part says just in general we're responsible for the electrical system and the other part says it's only if we damage it um and so i asked her about that for clarification and so she responded and said that it is just if we break something otherwise they're generally responsible for the electrical system so i asked if she would change that because it was so unclearly written and she yeah. said no this was their standard lease and this is what they always use so I have kept a copy of that email where she, you know, kind of um, supported what I said about, you know, the, that whole section. So anyway, to answer your question, Bianca, there was one thing that stood out and I discussed it with her and got her response and I'm saving that, you know, her reply on that. Okay. Very well. <laughs> Good. Um, anything else? All right, is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the Eureka Learning Center lease for 4620 Myers Avenue. Is there a second? Second. 
It has been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Bianca? Aye. Melissa? Aye. And I also approve. Motion carries. 6-2, approval of IRS mileage rates for 2022. You know, this is something we do every year about this time. So, sure. Right. It's, to... In fact, it's in, our, it's in our policy that for mileage... Here's what I found. <laughs> Very quiet. Um, it's in our policy that for mileage rates, we use the IRS mileage rate. And in January is when the federal government updates that. So once their statement comes out of what the new update is going to be, then I always bring it to the board um, for action to adopt that. And I just wanted to point out that it is an increase. It was 0.56 per mile for 2021, and it will be 0.585 for 2022. And though it is a slight increase, when we do our budgets, we put a line item in for mileage reimbursement. And already that line item is well above what we're on track to spend. We're just not doing the traveling that we used to do. Um, and so even though it's an increase, it's still not be beyond or up to what we have already budgeted for anyway. I wonder why we haven't been doing this yeah. track. <laughs> yep. Sorry about the Siri thing. I forgot. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, I just said Siri. Yeah. Um, uh, are there any uh, questions or comments? No. Nope. Okay. Is there a motion? I will make a motion to approve the IRS mileage rates for 2022. I second the motion. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Bianca. Aye. Melissa. Melissa. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and I also approve. Motion carries. Uh, Six point four approval of, three. or excuse me, three um, approval of the school accountability report card for Northern United Humboldt Charter School. Okay, and this is something that every year, every school in the state does, and that is release their SARC or school accountability report card. And basically, it's kind of just a summary of things about our school. It ranges from anything uh, um, like, from things like how much we pay per pupil, how much, how many expenditures, how much expenditures we do per pupil, to how many teachers we have, how are our facilities doing? Um, what is our curriculum like? It's just a kind of a snapshot summary report card of our school. And these are all on not only our website, it's our SARC on our website, but um, the California Department of Education has these on their website too. So you can look up any school SARC if you wanted to. Um, and so every year that comes to the board for approval. This year, just like last year, the state has not released all of the necessary data to complete the SARC, but we still have our obligation to post this on our website by February 1st. So what the state has asked us to do, and they asked us to do the same thing last year, is to adopt it as is, which is only partially complete. So what is completed is the data that I could put in myself, and what's not completed, completed is the data that the state puts in. Um, so they've asked us to uh, go ahead and adopt it partially, go ahead and put it on the website as required by February 1st, partially completed. And when they uh, roll out their data, which is supposed to be in February, it will be updated. And that's true of the Humboldt one and then the next item for Siski as well. Any uh, questions or comments? No, we don't have any choice. It's... No. Uh, we waiting okay. for the state. Okay, is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve our school accountability report card for NUHCS. And I'll second. Second. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Bianca? Aye. Melissa? Aye. And I 
also approved. Motion carries. 6-4, approval of the school accountability report card from Northern United System Charter School. And same, same. I, yes, and as you heard <laughs> Sherry say previously, it's the uh, same thing, same explanation. We're waiting on the states for all the complete information. Any questions or comments? Nope. All right, uh, is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the school accountability report card for North of United Siskiyou Charter School. I second. Okay, then you said it simultaneously. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Bianca? Aye. Melissa? Aye. I also approve. Motion carries. Six five, approval of the first interim report for Northern United Siskiyou Charter School. So this Jerry. item, um, as you saw, was not in your packet um, and may never be in your packet. Um, today I had a meeting with Siskiyou County Office of Education. And as you guys know, they have had some serious staffing issues with their business office going on now for a couple of years, honestly. Um, and so today what they presented, and they presented it to everyone who called the superintendents who contract with them for business services, um, is that because of their staffing issues, they have just hired, they, they lost all, all of the budget techs they have, all of them, in the last couple of weeks. So they have hired two new budget techs and they are interviewing this week for a third. And when they get a third, that would be fully staffed for them. But because the two that they have already and the third that they're interviewing are all brand new, they all need to be trained and brought up to speed. So in consultation with FICMAP, they uh, uh, presented to us that what they do for first interim is just run a mirror of our adopted budget. So what that means is they would take all the numbers we use to make our budget when we made our budget in May and then you guys adopted it in June. They would take all of those same, all that same information, the same enrollment in projections, the same revenue projections, the expenditures that we budgeted, and they would feed that into the SAC software to run the first interim report using all of that information. So the first interim report would come out and it would be identical to budget adoption. And the reason they're proposing that is because it's now time for second interim and they would way rather get their staff up to speed and focus on getting second interim dialed in so that it is a much more accurate representation of what our budget looks like now versus what it did in May when we did annual adoption. Um, they would rather, you know, take focus on that to get that caught up. And so they said, because our first interim would be an exact duplicate of our budget adoption, there's actually no need for board approval because it is exactly the same. It's already been approved. There are no updates. There's not a first interim update to give um, if they do it in that manner. I still can bring it here. You guys can see it, even though you'll have seen it before. But um, she said, and this is something that I was never aware of. I never knew this. She said, she being um, Sarah Applegate, who yes. is the um, assistant superintendent at Siskiyou County Office of Ed. She said that first interim doesn't actually go to the state. County office reviews it and certifies it after our board certifies it, but it's not reported to the state. And so that's why this is one that could be easily done this way so that we could just focus on having an accurate second interim done. So everyone agreed to that and that's what they're doing moving forward. So there's nothing for you to do here, um, you know, no action to take. Um, and if you would like me to bring back first interim when they get it, I would be happy to. So what is uh, the board's pleasure? Um, leave it as is or have Sherry um, bring the mirror image to us? I, 
I see no re I see no need for unnecessary work. I agree. Okay. Um, you know what? I'll email it to you guys, and then if you want to review it on your own, you can. I just won't put it on the agenda. How about that? Okay. okay. Sure. Whatever you <laughs> feel. You said the only difference will be one says budget adoption and one says for Yeah, <laughs> that's true. It's going to yeah. true. All right, so no action for um, six five. Correct. Uh, six six approval of pay scale revisions. Okay. This is an interesting. Yeah. So um, you guys saw that we. Um, in the background sheet that we're asking for the pay scale to be updated in one area and that's the substitute teacher line. So currently we pay $137.50 per day for substitute teacher and we're asking to change that to $35 per hour for a teacher and a teacher's day is seven hours long just for an FYI. But the reason that we're doing this is because we are having a very difficult time, as is all as are all schools, with getting substitutes. And Humboldt County Office of Ed has compiled a list of potential substitutes, people that they have done like orientation to and train. And they're on a list with like their contact information and the area in which they'll sub. And so we knew that we were going to need a couple subs, one due to maternity leave, one I think due to paternity leave, or I don't know, a couple of reasons we knew we were going to need subs. So we started working our way down this sub list that HCOE provided. And as you can imagine, the first question is, what do you pay? And they don't want to commit to a long-term sub position knowing if it's not the top pay because they don't want to turn down other jobs in which they would get paid more. So we took a look at um, the other schools in the county at their sub rate. And if we change this to $35 an hour, we would have the top sub rate pay. And one of the reasons that I feel that this um, is fiscally prudent is because we use subs so rarely as a non-classroom based independent study charter school, the vast majority of our teachers, there is no sub. If they aren't feeling good today, they're gonna to meet with their student tomorrow rather than today. Or, you know, it's because our kids are all on independent study. In my, um, in my experience, the only two locations of our facilities where we ever do get subs is a cut and learning center, and Bryceland Learning Centers sometimes will get subs, but that's about it. So we get subs so infrequently that upping this uh, pay scale is not going to have much of a fiscal impact because we don't call for subs very often. But when we do, we need them. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's why I'm proposing this and um, I'm asking that you guys approve the $35 an hour for subs. Any comments or questions? I guess um, I was wondering, did you choose it from day to hour because that's the way that other schools pay is by the hour and so it makes- No, no, no one else pays by the hour. The reason we chose that is you may notice on the pay scale, that was already the pay, $35 an hour is already the pay for our certificated small group instructors. And so we felt like that was a very equivalent um, position because you'll notice for a certificated small group instructor, that is one teacher with three or more students. And so we felt like that was a very equivalent role. So that's why we chose that, but no, nobody else does by the hour. Yeah, it's all done per day. And I wonder, I wonder if it would, well, I was going to say, I wonder if it would make sense in parentheses next to that to put like seven hour day or something, I don't know, something like that, just so that it's very clear. But I mean, there might be a, there might be a time where we would only need a sub for half day. I, you know, I, I don't know, in which case then it would be three and a half hours, but our subs fill out a timesheet 
anyway, where they're putting their hours. Mm -hmm. So it's easy for our payroll people to calculate that for the hour. But I just wonder if it would make sense for a sub, since they're so used to seeing a daily rate, would it make sense for us to put something on the pay scale that, you know, in parentheses, like just do that math for them, you know, I don't know. Anyway, so that's. Well, that's an interesting thought. Um, it brings to mind, well, who, who besides us sees this document? Nobody really. You're yeah. right. We don't show subs this. Hey, yeah. this is what we pick. But like, for example, let's just, Rebecca, I'm going to pick on you. Rebecca Davis, if she's talking to a sub and saying, oh, sub, would you come sub for me this day? We pay $35 an hour. The teacher may not, you know, the sub may not do the quick calculation. It might be easier for her to say, that's $2.45 a day, you know, or something like that. Um, so I don't know, just Rebecca, if you want to, if you want to speak up and tell me what you think, if you feel like it would be more helpful, like on there for us to put the daily rate or something, if I don't know, or what do you think? Yes, I do think the daily rate would be more helpful because that's how they, you know, communicate. And so, you know. Okay. Why they, don't we I put mean, both on there. Yeah, there you go. Okay, thank you. So if somebody makes a motion to a, to adopt this new pay scale, maybe say with that correction on there, with, with that addition of having um, a daily rate on there next to the hourly rate. And you're suggesting that the daily rate is at seven hours? What was that, Bianca? Are you suggesting that the daily rate is at seven hours? Seven and a half hours. Seven. We could say that on there too. Yes. The the a daily the daily rate is seven hours. Yes. Okay. I you. assume this is also competitive for Cisco. Very. <laughs> Although I don't know that Cisco has ever had a sub. Never. Yeah, never. never it's just not a, a sub. We've yeah, had that's what I mean about we do it so infrequently. Yeah. And, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's that's just um, very wise uh, thinking, you know, considering that it's really rare that we use them, and so. The, the amount of uh, money expended is mm -hmm. uh, the need far exceeds right. you know what right. uh, it's going to cost. And Rebecca is correct that uh, all subs look at uh, a daily rate. Yeah. Um, you know what's the bottom line? How yeah. much am I gonna? Yeah. Thank need? you for that input, you guys. So, all right. Um, considering the discussion with uh, the correction or addition made. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the pay scale revision with the addition of the daily rate. All right, uh, is there a second? Should we specify the daily rate? We will, like with the hours on there, we will. We'll put the daily rate with the hour, how many hours a day is. I second the motion. That was a second. Oh, was that <laughs> yeah. A yeah, she said I second the motion. Okay, okay. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Bianca. Aye. Melissa. Aye. And I also approve. Motion carries. Um, 6.7, approval of the wellness policy revision. So this was just a revision, which is why we don't have it as like a first reading, second reading. Um, the, in your packet, the older, well, the current version is first and the proposed version is second. And the difference is on the second to the last page, we have added some COVID-19 um, language. So we add in there um, kind of our general guidelines about COVID, meaning following local, state, 
um, health orders and guidelines, um, mask wearing, frequent hand washing, um, air filters, all of those kinds of like generalized COVID-19 um, guidances. We've added that to our wellness policy that wasn't currently in there. And it had been uh, pointed out that that was something that should be added. Any questions or comments? Um, one of the sentences reads awkward to me, Sherry. Okay, tell me which one. It starts with the word solid. Solid. Solid, solid partitions reducing. Yeah, partitions reducing. Are all engineering oh. controls. Oh yeah, it does. That that are implemented, baby, are all engineering controls implemented. Just I just need to take out that second R, don't you think? A R E. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for catching that. Somebody's got to do it without Rosemary here. <laughs> Good job, Bianca. Rosemary's replacement. Oh, I see another <laughs> issue. What's the last page where it says? Submit your completed form or letter to USDA by, and then there's colon, and there's no number one and a number two and a number three. Something's missing there. Yeah. Do you guys see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's number one. Hmm. Well, I will fix that. Okay. Do you remember what number one was, Linda? I don't. I don't either. We'll Would find it. Be, it. Um, uh, a mailing address. Maybe I could because look it up. I know, and an email. email. I can look it up really quick. What that is is um, that non-discrimination statement is something that is required to be in our wellness policy as well for our food program. And that non-discrimination statement is something that's given to us by the federal government that we have to put on every one of our documents related to the food program. So I don't know how that copying and pasting, how it missed that. I can look it up really quick for you. I mean, if, if you're comfortable making the um, motion, you know, that, that those two things are fixed, if you're comfortable making that motion without seeing what language goes at number one, that would be fine, but in the meantime, I'll start trying to look it up to see what's supposed to be there. What do you think? Uh, I trust Sherry to find the right address. Okay. Yep. So, uh, okay, so I'll make, there... I'll make a motion to approve the wellness policy revision with the two edits suggested. Is there a second? I'll second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Bianca? Aye. Rosemary, or excuse me. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> this is on the yellow. Uh, Melissa? Aye. And I also approve uh, motion carries. Yeah. And I got it, you guys. I found the address, just so you know. Is it is? In it's address. in Washington, D.C. Yeah, yeah. It, is. it says number one mail with a colon, U.S. Department of Agriculture, Office of the Assistant Secretary for Civil Rights, 1400 Independence Avenue, Southwest Washington, D.C., and then the city. Yeah. It's, Sorry about that. Would have been reasonable. Um, all right, moving on to seven uh, reports. 7.1, uh, enrollment and attendance report. Um, you can see in, in the packet, um, the numbers and remember how you know how they're represented it's not in real time um do you want to say anything uh, yeah i don't think there's anything to add um in terms of our of the the attendance we're holding pretty steady um enrollment continues to be an issue. We are much lower than we would like, and that is across the board. Um, every school I talk to, that is the case. We don't know where these students are, but they are not attending public schools. They're out there somewhere. Yeah. Seven, two, uh, are any, any comments or questions for Sherry? No. About that? All right, 7-2, the financial report for 
Northern United Humboldt and Northern United Siskiyou Charter School. Those two are in your packet. I don't know that there's anything else to report. Yeah. You can all see the numbers. Any questions or comments? No. Nope. Yeah. All right. Um, seven three, the director's report. I really only have one thing that I wanted to report on. Um, I mean, other than the fact of, you know, COVID is alive and well, lots of positive cases with staff and student, uh, students, but we're, you know, moving forward. Um, the one thing that I wanted to report on though was just give a quick facility report with the new Eureka Learning Center. Things are really moving um, well with that now. That's really on track. We went and visited the facility last week, I think it was. Um, I say we, but I actually didn't go, but a couple other staff members went and it I, it was reported to me that it's looking really nice. It's like they've done a lot. You know, I told you the new floors and new paint and they took out the bathroom partitions and, you know, putting new ones in and cool. it's coming along. But in the meantime, we have ordered a sign for the building. We've uh, hired a moving company to move everything. We've had the electrician come and look at the vent hood in the chemistry lab, in, in the science lab right now, and give us a quote for moving it from there to the new facility. And they went to the new facility and we had our science teacher come as well to say where the hood should go. And so we've gotten that quote. It was pretty reasonable. I, I it's like a thousand or twelve hundred or something. We've contact, um, contracted with a plumber to move the shower, the eye wash station from the old facility to the new. Um, let's see what else. The plan is we're going once the um, some of those things are done, like the sign is put up, the floor is finished, the partitions are in, and all of that. We're going to have an open house for the parents and mm -hmm. students of Eureka Learning Center to come check out the new facility. Um, and, you know, well before the move actually happens, but to just come check it out and, you know, probably have like coffee, punch, cookies, that kind of thing, um, answer questions and, you know, talk about how drop off and pick up will happen and those, all of that. And the move is going to happen. You might remember we decided to back it up to President's Week. So President's Week this year is late. It's like the last week of February. And so the week prior to that, all of the Eureka Learning Center students are going to be home-based independent study so that you know they'll be at home doing their work for that week before President's Week for the teachers to like pack everything and stuff. And then the moving vans are gonna come and move everything. And then the teachers will have the opportunity to set up their classrooms because then the students will actually come, start coming to the new facility on, it's February 28th is the Monday that will officially be in there. Do you have a uh, tentative idea on the open house? Thing? Julie, do you have a tentative idea of what you're thinking on the open house? Beginning of February, maybe middle of February. Before, probably probably the yeah, but probably the middle of February, Sherry. Um, we're actually already packing boxes. We have one whole room packed almost. Um, so we're going to start moving boxes over there as soon as we can. Um, but we're looking at like the middle of February is probably you know before we go on and could even be that week we are they're on independent study, you know, it might even be that week. So uh, going to talk to the staff a little bit more about that and, uh, you know, get the keys so we can actually bring our staff over there to, for, for them to see it all because uh, some of our staff haven't seen it yet. So. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. Exciting time. Yeah. Yeah. That was the only thing we I wanted to report on. Well, good. We've certainly come a long way with. Yeah. Uh, trying to figure something out and then looking at over and all the haggling about this and that. Yeah. So. I also should say our last day at the old facility is the last day of February. So they agreed to let us out of the lease for the rest of the year. Good. Any comments or questions for uh, our director? No. Thank you. Okay. 
Okay. So seven four, Northern United Humboldt Charter School report. As you can see, it's in in uh, our packet. It, um, Rebecca, uh, do we want to? Uh, it's Rebecca. It was Rebecca's month this month. Go ahead, Rebecca. If you have anything. Yeah, I, was say it. <laughs> I feel so like it was the all there. Lots of fun in December, but uh, that's all I have. Great pictures. Um, any uh, questions or comments? About this? As always, thank you for the photos. Um, I noticed Santa Claus wasn't wearing a mask. Um, maybe he's not special. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, he's got that special magic. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, thank you very much. Excellent report. Very good. So, um, seven five Northern United System Charter School report. Kurt, say anything or no? Nothing. Nothing more to add. Okay. I did have a few photos that people submitted to me, like minutes after Lacey finalized it. So I have some photos, more photos to add next time. But. Really nice touch. Um, and seven six board report. Um, Bianca, do you have anything? Um, I think you know, like Sherry said, COVID is alive and well. Um, so I just like to give kudos to all of the staff for having patience and giving grace to the whole school community, to parents and children and to their colleagues. Um, it's just not a particularly easy time recently. So kudos to everybody. Um, and then beyond that, uh, my daughter's having a fantastic time in class right now. She's really enjoying it. Every day she's got something wonderful to say about all of the teachers that are present at the Mount Shasta Learning Center. So she's having a great time. Um, some of the things that I read, she comes home and talks about, which is adorable because she's six. So um, I think that's that's all I have this month. Thank you. Uh, Melissa? I don't really have anything to report, but I did want to say thank you guys for some of the same reasons. Just the patience with even just subtle colds and wanting to be careful and people, you know, just being respectful of others and stuff. So I really appreciate that. And I appreciate that everybody's just, you know, going on and enjoying the school year and all the kids, you know, even though you can't really see their smile, you can tell they're happy. <laughs> So, yeah, thank you guys. We're all learning how to read eyes better, yeah. aren't we? Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you. Um, uh, it's, uh, I'm glad to be back. It's, uh, seems like um, it's been a long time, but then, like, I am. Miss anything. Miss anything. <laughs> it's, a, it's all the same, except uh, I'm uh, sorry that uh, uh, Rosemary's not here with us. Uh, and hopefully, uh, she'll continue to improve and uh, everybody stay safe and stay healthy. So, um, item eight discussion items. 8.1, childhood vaccination requirements and in-person instructional opportunities. Um, this was on last month's mm -hmm. uh, 
agenda. Uh, and uh, as basically as a result of um, that discussion, um, we had our closed session uh, reviewing the, uh, some of the same things and hearing a legal perspective. And um, uh, it'll continue to be here. So, yeah, uh, I don't know if you guys want to have more discussion on this right now. Um, we certainly can. Uh, uh, you know, as we discussed in last month's meeting on this item, ultimately we have to make the decision as a school as to whether or not we're going to allow, allow students who are unvaccinated and have no waiver and do not qualify for special ed, um, whether or not we allow those students to participate in off campus vendor opportunities paid for by the school. I mean, I think that's kind of the bottom line um, question we have to answer. And so I don't know if you guys want to discuss that now. You want to put this on next month's agenda. Um, I, I do feel like we, we talked about this last month as well, that once we make the decision that we need to write a policy that discusses that and um, have something that our parents of unvaccinated students with no waiver that aren't on special ed, ones that fit into that category that they also sign acknowledging what it is they are allowed to do or what opportunities they have or don't have. Um, and then the third thing I kind of feel like we probably will need to clear, clear up once we make that decision is make sure that our vendor agreements have everything that are needed. So I see three pieces of documentation that need to be done that I will start working on once we make our ultimate decision. Um, any comments? I mean, what's what's um, the board's pleasure here to um, continue to discuss it right now? Uh, and obviously, um, it's it's going to um, be a part of the agenda until uh, we come to some decision. Um, does anybody have something they want to say now? Or not? Um, I, don't I will. Have... Go ahead. I don't really have anything to say about it, but some of the things, um, it does seem like it's going to be a lot of work to write the policies. And I think it will be, I do think it is a good idea to make it as easy. Um, comprehensible so that we don't have to answer questions about what we've written. So. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I think that's a good point. Yeah, that's, yep. that's, that's a good one. Uh, uh, Bianca's heard me say this ad nauseum um, uh, that we need to be proactive and not reactive. And certainly, COVID has put a lot more pressure on this, even though this does not at this time specifically deal with the COVID it's issue. Like but um, uh, what's <clears throat> going to be necessary what? to come out of this um, uh, is, is, is a policy um, and and it needs to be clearly communicated. So uh, keep it simple, um, keep it clear and make it reasonable mm -hmm. and make sure that everyone understands it. So there's no misunderstandings. Misunderstandings lead to a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. um, and um, there's enough going on that you don't need to add to um, 
any of that uh, unnecessarily. So, um, can I say something just quickly, Jerry? This is Julie. Okay, Julie. I just quickly wanted to make one comment about the fact that as we're making this decision, uh, we need to think about being competitive with other charter schools. Um, in other words, uh, what are other charter schools doing in regards to vendors and vaccinated students uh, and visiting outside um, vendors? Um, I would just like to keep that in mind because um, the vendors are a very, very large portion of our independent study uh, teachers um, program when it comes to their students. So just thinking about competition, thinking about what other charters do, and just keeping that in mind as we move forward making the decision. Thank you. Any other comments? All right. Um, we'll be revisiting this uh, until it's until we reach a resolution. Um, A2 administrative policy handbook, the first reading. Um, we, we dealt with um, students and staff, and now the last piece. Uh, is the uh, administrative component. And you'll see this one is much uh, smaller than the last two policy books have been, but this is just a first reading. So I'm just asking you, as I do with all first readings, to take a look at the policies in there. Um, you know, of course, for grammar and spelling and typo and that kind of thing, but mostly for the substantive nature of it. Do you feel like what is written there is, is the direction you want the school to go? Because these policies dictate what I do, you know, what I do in my job or what um, I ask our staff members to do. So please do look through them and see if you agree with them. And um, then next month, it'll be on here again as a action item. Um, and so anytime between now and next month, please email me with anything you see, any concerns, any needed corrections. And we, um, you know, I can make changes um, and then I'll bring it forward next month for adoption. And we will discuss anything that comes up too. All right. Um... Any questions or comments about this? I don't have any. <clears throat> All right. So moving on to nine, uh, next board meeting, nine one, possible agenda items, interview of potential new board member. Uh, there's a uh, board meeting. Um, I should say January 19th. Yes, sorry. <laughs> I noticed it. Yeah. I was like, Isn't this? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, um, next board meeting will be uh, tomorrow, a special board meeting. And then um, February 11th for our regular uh, monthly meeting. Um, any um, possible potential future agenda items? Yes, in February, there will be a presentation on a mid-year update on the LCAPs for both schools. Um, also, I think maybe the school calendar will be on next month as well. I think February is the month we usually adopt the calendar for the next school year. Though as of yet, I haven't seen anything come out from HCOE. Like they're, you know, they usually send out a, a template or sample calendar. Um, but those are things that I'm anticipating for February. Um, are there uh, any other things, uh, uh, board member um, is thinking of or would like to see? 
Uh, well, the administrative policy handbook will be there. Yes. Um, so and the discussion on the immunizations. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think so. Okay. Will we be able to move forward with writing a policy? Um, or do we have to make like a decision and take a vote on the specific immunization? Um, yeah, that's what we'll have to do. We'll have to make a decision. Like that will be something that you guys will need to decide. And then I'll contact Young Mini and Core to write the policy based on the decision. And then once the policy is written, it will come back to you for approval. But first I have to have direction onto what that policy should say. So it won't actually be an action item until you see the policy. Really what I'm looking for from you guys is direction on what that policy should say. So that will be, um, you know, that's why I'll put it on as a discussion item next month. And hopefully during that discussion, you can come to con some consensus to give me a direction. That understood? Yes, thank you. Okay, good, good. Well, if there's nothing uh, further um, at this time, I will adjourn 725, adjourn this board meeting. Thank and, you to everybody who came and hung out at <laughs> such a late hour. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody.